Well, working at DG comes with a wonderful fringe benefit. I get to take in a lot of devotionals led by you, Pastor John. These are off-air private devotionals created as preludes to uh, DG staff meetings and leadership team meetings. Uh, A lot of these devotional times together are an overflow from your huge investment in Look at the Book, your, your video series doodling on Bible texts. And one of those recent DG devotionals struck me. Um, you were leading us on spiritual warfare and taking us through the armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6. And you stopped at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, where Paul reminds us that our enemies are not flesh and blood. Our enemy is a spiritual being, the devil and his forces. That is our true enemy. And yet our enemy strikes at us through flesh and blood, a point that you made from Ephesians 4, verse 14. Mm -hmm. So can you walk us through the the logical connections that you made that our enemy is not flesh and blood, but he works through flesh and blood? Explain that. So I was working my way through Ephesians 6 with look at the book, and I got to chapter 6, verses 10 through 12. And what stopped me, puzzled me, at least at first, was not the affirmation that we have supernatural adversaries but the apparent denial that we have human adversaries. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that was the what? Um, here's what he says. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. And then comes the denial. For we do not wrestle against blood and flesh. And by the way, that is the right order. It's usually translated Hmm. uh, in English versions, flesh and blood, but there are two places, one in Hebrews and one here, where it's reversed, Hmm. blood and flesh. And I'll come back to that. I think it's significant. Um, We do not wrestle against blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So, for me, the question is not, do we have a supernatural demonic adversary? We certainly do. But what does Paul mean when he says, we do not wrestle against blood and flesh? And ordinarily, those two words, blood and flesh, or flesh and blood, simply mean human, just human reality, considered apart from any special work of God's saving grace. Just what we are by fallen nature. That's flesh and blood or blood and flesh. So it sounds like Paul is saying, we don't wrestle against ordinary fallen humans. And the problem is that Paul himself, even in the same book, describes such human adversaries. Chapter 4, verse 13, he tells us, don't be children tossed to and fro by human cunning by craftiness in deceitful schemes. So you almost have the exact same words, you know, demonic schemes and these, this human cunning in the craftiness of deceitful schemes. And so what in the world is going on? In 6.12, he says, we don't wrestle against blood and flesh, but against the schemes of the devil. And in 4.14, he says, don't be carried about by human cunning or deceitful schemes. Now, Paul is a lot smarter than I am. (laughs) That's an understatement. And he is inspired by the Holy Spirit in what he says. And so I am getting low here and assuming that these two texts from the inspired apostle do not contradict each other. And he means for us to figure out how they fit together. So here are some relevant texts that inform my solution. Ephesians 2, 1 following. You were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, 
like the rest of mankind. So, all fallen, unregenerate humans walk or live, quote, according to, in step with, the prince of the power of the air, Satan. But that reality of being in step with the devil, all of us, before we're set free by the gospel, that reality of walking in step with, in sync with, on the frequency of the devil as sons of disobedience does not mean we are pawns who have no accountability because he says we are walking in sins and trespasses that we are committing and that we are children of wrath. In other words, we are blameworthy. We deserve judgment. God's holy wrath. So I take this to mean that the devil taps into our natural sinfulness in a way that influences us profoundly, but does so in a way that does not take away our accountability or our guilt before God. Paul describes human sinfulness in chapter 4 of Ephesians, verse 18, like this. They are, meaning they, Gentiles, humans, they are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, and the bottom is, is here, due to the hardness of their heart. In other words, he traces the problem of our guilt and our sin down to the hardness of our own heart, no mention of the devil, none. Yeah. We are our own condemning problem. Then, when you watch Paul seek to save and sanctify sinful people in Ephesians, you don't see any exorcisms, no power encounters. What you see is he speaks straight to us with gospel implications. Let the thief no longer steal, but let him labor doing honest work with his own hands so that he can have something to give. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by which you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you. And he goes on and on just speaking directly to us, to our minds, to our hearts, to our wills. In fact, he says the great challenge for Christians, is that we are new creatures in Christ by faith, and we need to put off the old self and put on the new self. Chapter 4, verses 22 following. So Paul's whole approach to helping Christians fight for holiness almost never mentions the devil. Hmm. Not surprising, since three of the pieces of armor, there's six, three of the six pieces of spiritual armor are truth, gospel, and word of God. <laughs> and those are all things that Paul speaks directly into the human mind and the human heart. He doesn't speak those things to the devil. He speaks them to people. In 2 Corinthians 5.11, Paul says, Knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. That's what he did. He went around the world persuading human beings. He didn't have this excessive demon orientation. He didn't walk into synagogues and cast out demons. He walked into synagogues and argued about the Old Testament. <laughs> we, 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 we speak directly to men. We don't do an end run around human mind or human heart to try to attack the devil. The warfare for the souls of men is fought with truth and gospel and word of God, speaking directly to men, not Satan, all the while praying in the Spirit for supernatural power. Now, even though Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers, nevertheless, Paul's response to satanic blinding is not to speak to Satan, but to speak directly to responsible, guilty, blinded human beings with the gospel while praying down the power of God. For example, 
In Acts 26, 17, Jesus says to Paul, I am sending you to open their eyes. You, Paul, I'm sending you to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins. Paul preaches the gospel straight to humans, and God uses the gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit to set people free from satanic blindness. Same thing in 2 Timothy 2.26. Paul teaches the truth to people, and then it says, God may perhaps grant them repentance and escape from the snare of the devil. So here's my conclusion about uh, what Paul means when he says we don't wrestle with blood and flesh. Two things. Number one, he means there is no such thing as a merely human adversary of the gospel. They don't exist. While this world is under the sway of the evil one, 1 John 5, 19, the whole world lies under the evil one. While that's the case, unbelieving humans are always influenced by and in step with the devil. We don't wrestle against mere human forces because there aren't any. Number two. I think he mentions blood first in the pair. We don't wrestle against blood and flesh because he's drawing our attention to the fact that this warfare is not like the ordinary battlefield of warfare among people marked by blood and gore. That's not what he's talking about, in other words. We don't fight like that. It's not a matter of chopping off arms or heads and blood and flesh. Our warfare is always fought at a level that includes the supernatural. Yeah, amen. Very insightful. Thank you for leading us through that, Pastor John. And I thank you for your your look at the book videos. It's a wonderful teaching resource. Really appreciate it. And thanks for your DG devotionals as well. And thank you for listening today. You can ask a question of your own. You can search our growing archive or subscribe to the podcast. You can do all that at desiringgod.org forward slash ask Pastor John. Well, Monday, we are back to hear from a disabled mother uh, to two small kids. She reads Proverbs 31, the valiant woman, the diligent wife, up early, late to bed, endlessly busy inside and outside the house, and she physically can't do it. So how can she be a faithful mother when Proverbs 31 is so far beyond what she can achieve due to her physical limitations? You do not want to miss this one. I'm your host, Tony Ranke, Pastor John, and I will see you back here on Monday. Have a great weekend.